It is great to see y'all today. It really is. Uh, I have missed y'all. I am so sorry about Wednesday night. Bivocational pastoring is uh, is really an interesting time sometimes. So, well, um, today we're going to be uh, carry on in Acts. We're going to continue to follow Paul as uh, he goes through. Uh, He's trying to get back into Europe, into Macedonia, but right now he's still in uh, he's still in Ephesus in Asia. So we'll be in Acts 19. We're going to start in verse 11, and we're going to start reading. Um, We'll do something a little different today. I'm going to go ahead and read through the entire scripture, and then we'll go back and look at it. Okay. So if y'all are ready, Acts 19 verse 11. God was performing extraordinary miracles by Paul's hands so that even face cloths and aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. Now some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists also attempted to pronounce the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying, I command you by the Jesus that Paul preaches, seven sons of Sceva, A Jewish high priest were doing this. The evil spirit answered them, I know Jesus, I recognize Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them, overpowered them all, and prevailed against them. So they ran out of the house naked and wounded. When this this became known to everyone who lived in Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, They came afraid, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high esteem. And many who had become believers came confessing and disclosing their practices, while many of those who had practiced magic collected their books and burned them in front of everyone. So they calculated their value and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. In this way, the word of the Lord flourished and prevailed. Verse 21, after these events, Paul resolved by the Spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and go to Jerusalem. After I've been there, he said, it is necessary for me to see Rome as well. After sending to Macedonia two of those who assisted him, Paul and Erastus, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. About that time, there was a major disturbance about the way. For a person named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Artemis, provided a great deal of business for the craftsmen. When he had assembled them, as well as the workers engaged in this type of business, he said, Men, you know that our prosperity is derived from the business. You see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this man Paul was persuaded and misled a considerable number of people by saying that gods made by hands are not gods. Not only do we run a risk that our business may be discredited, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis may be despised and her magnificence come to the verge of ruin. The very one all of Asia and the world worship. When they had heard this, they were filled with rage and began to cry out, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! so that the city was filled with confusion, and they rushed all together into the amphitheater, dragging along Gaius and Aristocrats, Macedonians, who were Paul's traveling companions. Although Paul wanted to go in before the people, the disciples told did not let him. Even some of the provincial officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent word to him, pleading him with him not to venture into the amphitheater. Some were shouting one thing and some another because the assembly in the, was in confusion and most of them did not know why they had come together. Some Jews in the crowd gave instructions to Alexander after they pushed him to the front. Motioning with his hand, Alexander went to make his defense to the people, but when they recognized that he was a Jew, they all shouted in unison for about two hours, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. When the city clerk had calmed the crowd down, he said, People of Ephesus, what person is there who doesn't know that the city of Ephesians is the temple guardian of the great Artemis and the image that fell from heaven? 
Therefore, since these things are undeniable, you must keep calm and not do anything rash. For you have brought these men here who are not temple robbers or blasphemers of our goddess. So if Demetrius and the craftsmen who are with him have a case against anyone, the courts are in session and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you see anything further, it must be decided in legal assembly. In fact, we ruin a risk of being charged with rioting for what happened today since there is no justification that we can give as a reason for this disturbance. Verse 41, after saying this, he dismissed the assembly. Lord, bless the reading of this, your word. Follow me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your, your son, Lord. It's the most important gift you have ever given us. Lord, that you have bridged the gap back to you, which we could not do ourselves. Lord, we ask that uh, you use the Holy Spirit within us to understand uh, the reading of your word here. I ask that uh, my preaching today uh, falls on the hearts, be open, and that the Holy Spirit allows each and every one of us to understand what is here for us to understand. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, we're here in Ephesus. Ephesus is really, really a big place um, in the Bible, according through Acts, because um, Paul goes through Ephesus quite a lot. Um, Ephesus is a crossroads. Crossroads, you're going to have all kinds of trade. It goes everywhere. When you have all kinds of trade, you have all kinds of people. When you have all kinds of people, you have all kinds of ideas coming into place. And with that, we only hear about a certain amount of ideas here. But what I want to start out with is verse 11. After Paul <coughs> does his time in the temple or in the uh, lecture hall of Tyrannus, Paul comes out and it says, God was performing extraordinary miracles by Paul's hands. Now, I want you to read this, uh, understand this word, extraordinary miracles. Extraordinary miracles. What is an extraordinary miracle? Wouldn't a miracle by itself be extraordinary? I mean, if, if something happened that was a miracle today, that would be extraordinary to me. But this is like well above there that, that, that Paul is talking about. I mean, that, um, that Luke is talking about, okay? So they're talk, um, he's saying here that God was performing extraordinary miracles by Paul's hands so that even the face cloths or aprons that had touched the skin were brought to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. Now, what I want you to understand here is not the sense that Paul was doing the miracles it was that God was doing the miracles through Paul, okay? Now, I want to go back and touch on something that Carson loves to say, that Jesus is divine, and we are the branches, okay? We have been adopted into Jesus. We have been adopted into there, so we become branches that have grafted into the vine that Jesus provides life for us, okay? So when we are branches, branches beside ourselves cannot produce fruit, can they? Okay, they cannot, all right? But if we're branched, if our branch is grafted into the vine, we at that point can produce fruit. Why? Because all the life and nutrition from that vine comes out of the branches, and then the branch at the end flowers and the fruit is produced. So does that mean that just because we're attached now that the branch produced the fruit? No, the branch did not produce the fruit, the vine produced the fruit. In the same way that when we produce fruit out there and in the world, that our fruit that we produce is from God, not from us, not from our hands. It is God through us that allows that fruit to be produced, okay? So, and, and let's look at this. What actually produces fruit through you, okay? Let's look back at Jesus in, uh, back in Luke 8, chapter 8. Do you remember that? 
Jesus was running through the crowd. Luke 8, uh, verses 43 through 48. There was a woman that was with blood for many years, right? And what did she do? She sat there and she reached out and she grabbed hold of the apron, the hem of his robe. Okay? And Jesus knew it. Jesus said, I felt the power come out of me and I turned around. Who touched me? She said, I did. I'm sorry. I, you know, she told about this, the uh, problem with her bleeding. Okay? And guess what? From that moment forward, she was healed of that ble bleeding. And what did Jesus say at that point? Okay? What Jesus said was, your faith has made you well. Okay? At that point, your faith has made you well. So her faith in that Jesus could, could heal her made her well. Okay? Earlier in Acts, when we started this a long time ago, back in the... You remember that? In, verse, in Acts 5, verses 15 through 16, people were even trying to get into Peter's shadow. Why? Peter's shadow was healing people. Okay? Now, was it Peter's shadow? No. It was God through Peter. They got into his shadow because they had the faith that God would heal them. And Jesus, and do you remember when Jesus went to Nazareth? This, this I find, that, I find this to be uh, uh, really personal to me, especially when I go home to my parents, Okay. Um, a prophet in his own city is not listened to, okay? Um, but Jesus in Nazareth, in Luke 4, verses 14 through 30, he couldn't do anything at home when he went to the synagogue. Jesus, why? He did, they did not have faith. What did they say? They said that no faith because you are, aren't you Joseph's son, the carpenter's son? How are you the Messiah? They did not have faith in who Jesus was. Okay? I mean, we, we can even go back. We can even go back to the Old Testament to look at this. Okay? Elisha, the prophet. Right? Elisha, the prophet, was in Israel. He was a prophet for Israel. He told them what was going to happen, but yet many died from leprosy. Many had leprosy that they couldn't get rid of, okay? But there was one person that got rid of the leprosy, okay? That was a man named um, um, Naaman. Naaman was his name, okay? And who was he? Uh, he was an Israeli high priest, right? No, he was not. He was a Syrian a non-Israeli got healed. Why? Because he had faith in that God was who he said he was. So these people here with Paul in these verses 11 through uh, 12, they were healed not because Paul touched the face cloth, not because Paul had the apron. They were healed because they had faith in Jesus. He was the Messiah. He was the Savior to God. That's why they had faith, okay? Let's move on, Acts 13. Acts 13 through 17. Now, some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists who attempted to pronounce the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I command you by the Jesus that Paul preaches. I command you by the Jesus that Paul preaches. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish high priest, were doing this. The evil spirit answered him, I know Jesus, I recognize Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them, overpowered them all, and prevailed against them so that they ran out of the house naked and wounded. When this became known to everyone who lived in Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, they became afraid, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high esteem. So as, as, as you study, it's a skiva, right? So we, there's authority here because he was a high priest of Sceva, right? Okay? Nowhere can, in any Jewish manual anywhere, was Sceva a high authority. Okay? They could not find Sceva being a priest, a high priest or anything. But he had 
sons that went around, itinerant sons, okay? Itinerant means moving from place to place, and they would do exorcisms, all right? Now, I was unaware of this myself, okay? But exorcisms were done by Jewish people. Jewish people believe in ghosts. Jewish people believe that ghosts inhabit other people, okay? And they do exorcisms, the rabbis do. Um, there was documentation found in 1400 about a rabbi doing this um, to his um, wife at the time who was a widow and saying that the husband, her first husband, was, was in the house and in her spirit. Anyway, um, I digress. But Jewish people apparently do do exorcisms, Okay. So nowhere is Skiva mentioned as a high priest, okay? This was a self-proclamation of him and his sons, okay? Now, what they were doing is they were going around and they were using formulas, okay? This was almost like an illusionist, okay? Where they would come in and they would say, okay, I'm going to take the spirit out of you. They said, okay, well, Paul seems to be doing well with these face claws and healing people, so we're going to use Paul's, the, the Lord that Paul preaches, okay? Where else have we seen this in the Bible? Maybe uh, Simon Magus? Yes, yeah, Simon Magus. What did he want? He offered money. That was back in Acts 8, right? He offered money uh, to Peter and John, you know, let me have the ability to lay on hands. And uh, they said, no, may your money... Um, Peter rebuked Simon and said, uh, may your money just go down with you. Um, and Simon said, uh, begging Peter at that point, please ask your priest, pray for me to your Lord that this does not happen to me. Okay, please pray for me to your Lord. The funny part was, is Simon could have the same Lord that Peter had. Why did he ask Simon to pray? I mean, why did Simon ask Peter to pray for him when he could actually have the same Lord? But he didn't. He just wanted the power, which I think is what's going on here is they want the power to do all these exorcisms, right? Which is kind of funny because the demon at the time says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I've heard of. Who are you? Okay. And I have done some experience and um, I have done some research into exorcisms, into the uh, church, and them doing exorcisms on demons. And those demons are very powerful. They are very powerful, and they can make somebody the weakest person, okay? They could, take, they could make Ruthie right here jump on every one of us and have us run out of here naked as well, okay? Because that would happen. So be careful where you are in your life when you start dealing with people. I'm sorry, Ruthie, I didn't mean to bring you into that. But, but be careful where you are when you start dealing. These are real things out there we're dealing with. We're dealing. We're not dealing against flesh and bone, okay? We're dealing against powers and principalities, okay? And we have the one that wins. We have Jesus, all right? Now, what does that mean we have Jesus? What does that mean that we have Jesus? We need to be right with Jesus before we start messing with this, people. We need to have the right relationship with Jesus. Don't, don't say the Jesus that J.D. preaches. Don't say the Jesus that Brad preaches. You say the Jesus that I believe in. You say the Jesus that has changed my heart. And made me a new person. You say the Jesus that produces fruit at my hands. Okay. Let's look at Acts uh, 18 through 20. And many who came, who had become believers, came confessing and disclosing their practices. While many of those who had practiced magic collected their books and burned them in front of everyone so that they calculated their value and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. In this way, the word of the Lord flourished and prevailed. Okay? Now, what are we looking at here? The word of the Lord flourished and prevailed. I'm going to start from the, from the end here. 
that flourished and prevailed at, at, at some evil stuff going on. Why does it flourish and prevail? They were scared. They saw what the other side can do. Okay? They saw many. There are a lot of tent revivals, don't get me wrong. And, and there, there are people that go to these tent revivals, and there's a lot of people that walk down the aisles. Okay? In that sense, um, I've been to a Billy Graham revival. Okay? And, and, and at the time, I was not a saved person. Now, I, I believed in Jesus. I believed who he was. I was not repentant. Okay? That didn't come till much later. I didn't understand that. But if you ask Billy Graham at one time, how many people ha were saved by your hands? He'll he would have told you, I do not know. What I do know is how many people walk the aisle, okay? That is all he could say. He did not know what was in their heart or anything like that, okay? So sometimes people walk the aisle because they wanted what, what I like to coin fire insurance. They are so scared of hell and the demons that they said, I don't want that. I want this instead of seeing Jesus as who he is. Okay? That's what people have seen here. They're like, oh my gosh, I see the, what's bad. I want over here what's good. But they're only over there because they don't want bad. Okay? People need to look at Jesus and say, I want you because you're good regardless of what's over here. And that's what's going on here in what was said. Um, back to verse 18, okay? Um, the many believers came confessing and disclosing their practices. Okay, many believers. These weren't believers that became believers because of the people running out the doors. These were already believers in Ephesus. These were believers already going and meeting the church. These were the believers already that was eating um, with each other. Um, in meeting, okay? But they were doing other things as well as Jesus. And they saw how evil this other thing can be. And they were like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this and I'm not giving it all. I'm not all in for Jesus. I'm in the earth. I am in, I am in the world as well as I am with Jesus, okay? So what did they do? They realized this, and they brought all of their practices. Many of those who had practiced magic collected their books and burned them in front of everyone. So they put it out in a display, and they threw it out. Now, I'm not for book burning. Don't get me wrong, okay? But they threw everything out that was keeping them from being all in for Jesus and putting it in the middle, and they were burning it. They said it was 50,000 pieces of silver, Okay? Do you know how much 50,000 pieces of silver would have done that day? In that day, it would have paid 50,000 workers one day's wage. That's how much money they had invested in these books, in these trinkets, in these charms that supposedly would give them some type of, uh, um, some type of uh, magic or special powers. Okay, so they came and burned them here. They gave up everything at that point, and now they're focusing all on God, all on Jesus. Okay? So, at this point, I'm going to ask a rhetorical question I want you to think about while we go on through the next point. All right? What has your attention now? In this world that is taking you away from time you could be using to worship the Lord. What has your attention now that is taking you away from you, the time you could use worshiping the Lord? Now let's move on. Now we're going to go to Acts 21 and 22. Acts 21 and 22. The riot in Ephesus. After this event... Paul resolved by the Spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and go to Jerusalem. 
After, there, after I've been there, he said, it's necessary for me to see Rome as well. After sending to Macedonia two of those who assisted him, Timothy and Erastus, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. Okay, so he sent, he wants to go to Rome. Paul continues to want to go to Rome, right? So Paul sends his two um, trusted uh, companions on to Rome. He's going to stay in Ephesus just a little while longer. He's still going to be in Asia, okay? So when he's in Asia, what does Paul do all the time? Paul preaches. Paul reasons. Paul talks about the gospel. But uh, Paul wanted to get to Rome some kind of bad. Now, Luke here is talking in third person so that means that when we go through this I want you to understand that these are stories that have been brought back to him through people Luke is not with Paul at this time because if he was Luke would be saying we I and the such okay Luke is talking in third person so he is talking ab about what's going on from the people around Paul Okay, so <clears throat> now, verse 23, about that time, there was a major disturbance about the way, okay? The way at that time was something that was said about the people that followed Jesus, okay? But the, round, the, 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 the thought behind that is that the way was a sect of Judaism, they were still Jewish, okay? They still met at the synagogue, all right? So it was just a sect of, 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 of Jewish or um, Judaism in, in that, like, the Zealots were uh, um, a sect or the Essenes were a sect of Judaism, okay? That's how they were viewed at first, okay? So it was just, you're Jewish, but you have Jesus, and that's how they looked at this, okay? Now, they also had uh, multiple gods in Ephesus. And there was probably, there was probably, well, let me go ahead and read, read you the, um, the next uh, 23 through 27, then we'll get back to this, Okay. About that time, there was a major disturbance about the way. For a person named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Artemis, provided a great deal of business for the craftsmen. When he had assembled them, as well as workers engaged in this type of business, he said, Men, you know that our prosperity is derived from this business. You see and hear that not only Ephesians, but in almost all of Asia, this man, Paul, has persuaded and misled a considerable number of people to saying that gods made by hands are not gods. Not only do we run the risk that our business may be discredited, but also that the temple of the great goddess of Artemis may be despised and her magnificent come to the verge of ruin, the very one of all of Asia and the world worship. Okay, now, what we were going back to is the way, the way is a sect of Judaism, okay? And under that point, there's multiple gods right now in Ephesus. Now, the, the lead god that they would say would be Artemis, which is also, in Greek, would be Diana, okay? Now, um, this is probably <clears throat> the sect, or the, the sect of the way, okay? You got to understand this. At the time there, for Demetrius, would probably not be a real serious threat for him at the time, okay? Now, it is a threat, don't get me wrong, because everybody, all the gods there always had something, but this one here didn't have anything. There was no uh, gold, uh, like the golden calf at the bottom of the mountain, or anything like this to worship, okay? Um, Demetrius, as a demagogue, he was great. He, he, it shows here that he grabbed everybody up, and he was really good at getting everybody riled up together, but he had no plan to go anywhere, okay? And the Roman officials <clears throat> with the march, um, it shows them later on going into the Colosseum to start, to start a rally, okay? Now, think about this. All this, 
as you read it, you know this took place, but maybe it didn't all take place one right after the other, boom, 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 and within, you know, a day. I, I would say this took place a little bit over time, okay? Um, that's basically what I'm saying. Um, so, like, um, what we've read so far, making gods with own hands, all right? We, we can't make gods with our own hands, because if we made the gods with our own hands, it would make us, it would make us God, would it not? Okay, so, and we are not gods, okay? Think about this. Um, like I said before, there were many gods. Demetrius made a god. Now, um, I'm going to step back out really fast. As I was reading over this and I was praying about this, I couldn't help but think of some movies that I've seen before, okay? Do you remember a Superman movie? Do you remember the Superman movie where he was bad and um, he had gotten that little bit of kryptonite that, that, that Richard Simmons, I mean Richard Simmons, uh, Richard Pryor had gotten in that little thing and he didn't know what it was. And he went and, the, and, and the, the, the little Italian merchant was over there and he made, he had all of his little things up, the cell to the tourists, the little uh, towers of Pisa leaning over. And the Superman comes by and just straightens the tower of Pisa up and just runs over and the guy's like, oh my gosh, you know. That's the way I viewed this is Demetrius is like, oh, my gosh, he's saying that God made by hands. There is no God. Right. And 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 Demetrius is going, there goes my money. There goes my living. What am I going to do? OK, I could tell you what you could do is you could come over to his God and his God would take care of you and hope. Not meaning that you'd be rich or if it's not, you're, you know. But anyway, I digress. Um so as we go in, I, I also think here that um, God's made by hands, all right? What brings that into to effect? God's made by hands. My, one of my favorite chapters in the Old Testament, Daniel 3, okay? Daniel 3, where Nebuchadnezzar makes the, 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 the um, skylas, the, the, the God. And he says, when, when you hear all the music, you bow down to it, okay? Now, he's not saying that you can't bow down to God, or, or, you know, their God, he's telling Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you just bow down to this one, and then you bow down to whatever one you want. Also, in, in Rome, in Rome, you have um, Caesar, okay? You know, they wanted him to go and burn incense to Caesar. How hard is that? You burn incense to Caesar, but you go also and pray to your God, okay? No, it doesn't work like that. God doesn't want any other God before him, okay? That's important. All right, so you can't live in the world, uh, be of the world, and be of God. Okay, if that's important right now. Okay, and if you make God by your own hands, then that makes you God. Okay, that that ain't happening. Okay, so um, and another thing that 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 gets me. Uh, that's really funny is it says in, in, in verse 27, not only do we run the risk of our business not being discredited, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis <clears throat> may be despised and her magnificent come to the verge of ruin, the very one of all of Asia and the world worship. Now, if all of Asia and the world worships Artemis, okay, the whole world and all of Asia worships Artemis. How can, how can that happen? How can just some people talking cause them to fall to ruin? Can, can, if, if she is God, does she fall to ruin? No. If she is really God, she will not fall to ruin. I find that to be a kind of a comical there, okay? Because our God would never fall to ruin. So uh, as we move on, we go to verse 28 through 34. Um, then, they, then when they had heard this, they were filled with rage and began to cry out. Great is Artemis of Ephesians. So that the city was filled with confusion and they rushed all together to the amphitheater, dragging along Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians, who were Paul's traveling companions. Although Paul wanted to go in before the people, the, disi the disciple did not let them. Even some of the provincial officials of Asia who were his friends sent word to him pleading with him not to venture into the amphitheater. Some were shouting one thing and some another because the assembly was in confusion and most of them did not know why they had come together. 
Some Jews in the crowd gave instructions to Alexander after they pushed him to the front, motioning with his hands. Alexander wanted to make his defense to the people, but when they recognized that he was a Jew, they all shouted in unison for about two hours, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So what did we what are we getting here? They're crying out, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. The city was filled with confusion. They all went to the amphitheater. One was yelling one thing, one was yelling another. So what did Demetrius actually do? He riled up a crowd, did he not? Like, like, uh, um, like the Pharisees do to Paul in the marketplace. Okay? Now, it's not... Uh, uh, a Pharisee in the synagogue now is it's a Greek going out there riling up people and getting them into the amphitheater. And they got two sections yelling at each other. They have no idea what they're yelling about. Okay? None. They're yelling two different things. So we what do we know here? One, we know that Greeks hated the Jews, and Paul was persuaded out of making a defense in front of these people. Well, yeah. Why, why would you? It reminds, me, it reminds me of the people being so confused. While Paul, why would Paul go out there and make a defense? It wouldn't make a difference at that point. They were not listened, okay? It, it reminds me of, I was watching a, um, a video, okay, of a pastor, a street pastor, and, and is talking to a uh, woman of the Muslim faith, okay? And in that Muslim faith, they could not have a dialogue. God gave us the, the intellect and the wisdom, and we can reason. We can reason within ourselves. That's why we can take, we can, we can use evidence, okay? We can take the evidence and have real faith that there is a God, that Jesus did live, that Jesus did die on the or hang on a cross and die that Jesus did was buried and that Jesus was rose from the grave okay and he did it for us there is we can reason that and have faith about that okay but this street preacher was talking with this Muslim girl and all she could do was recite that Muhammad didn't write the scripture okay he asked her who wrote the scriptures, right? Because she was saying that there were 66 people that wrote, I mean, there was uh, many people that wrote the 66 books of the Bible in scripture and that, and that, you know, it was by men that it was written. Yes, but inspired by God, okay? He said, who wrote the, the, the Quran? And she said um, that it wasn't Muhammad, it was God that wrote the Quran because Muhammad couldn't read. Well, who wrote it? Well, Muhammad couldn't write and read, but he had the Quran. See, she couldn't reason. All she did was believe with blind faith that it was written. Okay? So, by not being able to reason, there's no point in trying to um, talk with that person. But that's what, that's, what's, that's what we've got here is Paul is persuaded from going out in a defense against the people, okay? Um, they were both shouting against each other, okay? And then Alexander, who was a Jewish person, went out there to quiet, uh, to give a defense. And then when they realized he was Jewish and he wasn't about Artemis, he wasn't about, you know, the gods of their time, they, they were just telling him, get out, shut down. And they did this for, they, they just started shouting back and forth. Now, why is this a problem to begin with, okay? There is a riot going on in the street. And it's because of the Jewish sect, the way that's been caused this riot, because uh, Demetrius is a demagogue that got everybody riled up, okay? Now, if the governor of Ephesus of the time found that this riot was going on, Okay, he wasn't going to be beheaded by whoever was uh, Caesar in Rome. Okay, he was just going to get rid of the Jews and, and, and cause the, that um, 
the riot to stop, okay? Because that's what's going to happen when everybody was rioting. And as we move down further, um, verse 35, um, when the city clerk had calmed the crowd down, he said, people of Ephesus, what person is here, is there, who doesn't know what the city of the Ephesians is, the temple of the guardian of great Artemis, and of the image that fell from heaven, okay? So the city clerk is standing up and trying to keep the people down. I guess he's standing where um, the uh, governor would stand, and he's quieting them down, and he's sitting there talking about, what are y'all doing? We all know that Artemis is, is you know, the, the god of Ephesians and the god of the world. Why are you doing this, okay? We saw that there was an image that fell from heaven, okay? Now, I believe that there was an image that fell from heaven, but let's look at it this way, all right? Uh, the image that fell from heaven, there was uh, um, meteors that fell from heaven, okay? Not everything burns up. That's where they get them from, okay? Well, it fell from heaven, then it must be God. Um, Therefore, since these things were undeniable, you must keep calm and not do anything rash. For you have brought these men here who, who are not temple robbers or blasphemers of our goddess. So if Demetrius and the craftsmen who are with him have a case against anyone, the courts are in session and there are pro cancels. Let them bring charges against one another. So right now there's, there's, there's pro cancels. There's, there's courts in session. Okay, This is not a, a criminal matter with these people in the way. Okay. They said that, you know, gods are not gods made with hands. So let's move on and go and go to take them to court. All right. This is this is going to be a problem. But if you seek anything further, it must be decided as a legal assembly. In fact, we run the risk of being charged with rioting for what happened today, since there is no justification that we can give a reason for this disturbance. All right. So the funny part is, is they can give a reason for the disturbance. They can't give a plausible reason for the disturbance okay and that they know what would happen right now it's just a civil matter all right artemis is i mean demetrius is losing money and and he's blaming the the way for doing it he needs to take them to court that's what the the clerk is saying okay but if we continue to riot over this we are all going to jail okay and we're all going to get you know uh the um the punishment so we need to stop. So he quiets down the crowd, and after saying this, he dismissed, dismissed the assembly, and the assembly goes on, okay? So nobody wants to be in, in half the people there don't know why they're there to begin with, right? So they, they're like, I don't want to go to jail, so they go on and go about their business, all right? So now we've got Paul, who, who has not come back, Artemis, Ephesians is not doing uh The things that went on in Ephesus has scared the Christians. And now they've come and given all their worldly things that are keeping them away from God, and they burned them, okay? Now, I remember, um, I'm go back a little bit. I remember back in the 70s when I was going to church, okay? I was not saved. I was in a youth group. I was not saved. I was, just because I went to church does not mean I was not saved. And I did. I burned my rock and roll records, okay, because I thought I was saved, but I was not saved. I know I was not, okay? And, and then we talked about prophecy here, okay? We talked about prophecy. When I talked about, you know, Elisha being a prophet, and a prophet is not known in his own court, okay? Well, there's prophecy going on now, okay? There are gods that are being uh, made now by hands, okay? Um, I told you I was a bivocational, all right? I go and I am a training instructor for the Job Corps in Cherokee, North Carolina, Okay, so I get the people, the new students that come in, 16 to 24, and they're in my class. All right, and there's something that I've seen that it, it just it just blew my mind. Okay, now I'm going to bring some of y'all back before y'all were born. Some of y'all are going to be remembering times of your youth. Okay, in the 60s, there was a group called Simon and Garfunkel. Okay. Did they not? All right, Simon and Garfunkel. What was one of the songs that they, they wrote? Okay, The Sound of Silence. All right, I did some study on that because of what I saw in the song later on, but I'll, I'll go back to that. 
I did some study. Why did they write that song? They don't know. It just came about, and they wrote it, and they thought it was great. It didn't mean anything. You know, they liked their music, all right? That was the 60s, right? That was 60 years ago they wrote this song, okay? This is what I'm going to leave with today because this, I think, is the most important aspect we need to get out of this today, okay? Now, here is the lyrics to this song right here, all right? I want you to listen good, okay? It starts off, they say, hello, darkness, my old friend. Darkness, that's the first thing. I've come to talk with you again because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping. And the vision that was planted in my brain still remains, okay? So we don't know who he's talking to. Darkness is his old friend. He's got some seeds in his brain. He planted seeds in his brain. So something is coming about, okay? Something is getting ready to happen. All right? Within the sound of silence and restless dreams, I walked alone, narrow streets of cobblestone. Neath the halo of the street lamp, I turned my collar to the cold and damp. When my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light that split the night. It was a neon light that split the darkness. Okay? And touched the sound of silence. And in the naked light I saw 10,000 people, maybe more. Okay? I want to stop right there. 10,000 people. Okay? When we, we sung the song just a little minute ago, it was 10,000 people, right? Or 10,000 blessings. Every time you see a song, when you look in the Bible, there's 10,000, correct? Okay? Now, 10,000 people, maybe more. People talking without speaking. People hearing without listening, people writing songs that voices never shared and no one dared disturbed the sound of silence. Okay? Fools, said I, you do not know. Silence like a cancer grows. Hear my words that I might teach you. Take my arms that I might reach you. But my words, like silent raindrops, fell and echoed in the wells of silence. The people bowed and prayed to the neon god they made. And the sign flashed out its warning and the words that it was forming. Then the sign said the words on, of the prophets are written on the subway walls and in the tenement halls and whispered in the sound of silence. Okay, let's start from the back. Tenement halls, subway walls. Okay, you're kept down. You're kept in, in chains. We're talking about people in tenement halls, tenement halls, project areas. We're talking about they're down. They're pretty much in slavery, if you will. When you get up and you work just for a day's wage to come home and you spend it the day you make it or more, you're in slavery, right? In the subway walls, okay? Okay. Now, all that comes to the point of everyone bowed their heads to the neon god they made. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, if you do not have a smart cell phone right now, you're an outcast. Carson, pick up your phone. Turn it on. Now, tools being used... But it's, it's like a neon light that breaks the sound, the, the night, okay? Okay, and when you see people, I can walk into my classroom at the, at the very first time I start. There's 10 students there getting ready to start their whole career. And all 10 of them, they're not talking to each other. All of them are down on their cell phones. Their heads are bowed, okay? And they've got it in their hands. Now, if they talk to each other, they're texting each other. There's no words. You're not hearing anything. You're not even communicating um, voice to voice. Okay? Everybody is still in this, this thing here that they're, they're, they've got this phone. I asked somebody in there, and I says, I says, who tracks how much time you spend on the cell phone? Okay? She spent 
82 hours in one week on the cell phone. TikTok. Something like that. Okay? The only reason I'm bringing this up now and here is, is it fits. Okay? Because you are wrapped up in this thing right here. It's a, it, if this takes up most of the time of your day, most of the time of your week, this is your God. You are worshiping this thing, this thing that uh, Simon and Garfunkel prophesied about in this song that's coming about. Okay? Now think about it. Whatever you do during the week, if you add that time up, and then you add the time up that you worship God or praise God, which one is more? Now, I'm not saying it's the cell phone. I'm not. I'm just using that as an example. Okay? But if it winds up being the cell phone, maybe you need to bring the cell phone up here and drop it right here and burn it in front of the altar. Don't burn it. That's a fire. I don't want you to really burn it. But maybe you need to bring it up here and drop it. Okay? That's why I said you think. That's why I asked you about that question in the middle. What is it in your life that you're doing more than worshiping God? Jesus gave everything for you. He owns you. He wants everything. Now, like I said back in here, the Jews the, and the Greeks that were believers, okay? They were doing other things too besides Jesus. And you saw what they did. They came up and gave everything. Are you ready to give everything to Jesus? Are you ready to live for Jesus? Are you ready to produce fruit at your hand? Allow Jesus to work through you producing that fruit. Because if something in your branch is doing something else, you don't have it all. You do not have it all. Let us pray.